Hi, it's Tony and Rob here, co-founders of Great Ideas. And th the question that we wanted to answer in this video is how does Trellispark change the way you test? So Tony, how have we changed the role of the QA team? Well, Trellispark is really cool. It's eliminated 90% plus of the CRUD code using our dynamic page generation technology. And this is really cool because what it's allowing the uh, the BA or the citizen developer to do is to actually build the user experience live with the business users. So what's really happening there as they go through that process is that they're effectively doing user acceptance testing at the beginning of the process. I mean, think about that, right? I mean, U UAT is normally something that's done at the end. We're getting it done right at the beginning as an iterative process. So as the BA is sat down with the business stakeholders, they're developing the actual user experience. Now, another side effect of removing 90% plus of the CRUD code, you know, the actual code to get the data on the form to the database, back from the database, update it and so on, is if you've eliminated 90% of that code, you've also eliminated at least 90% of the required testing. So it's it's huge, right? From a from a QA perspective, we've eliminated 90% of the work you're going to have to do, and and we've also completely turned the process on its head. You're doing UAT, or the BA is doing UAT as they're actually developing the actual user experience. Another thing that really helps here is the way that the Trellis Spark framework compartmentalizes everything. So this means that instead of your development team having to build, you know, large components with tens of thousands of lines of coding, they're building small functional components that maybe have 10, 20, 50, 100 lines of code. So they're able to produce smaller focused deliverables with far fewer lines of code. And this also enables them to put the time and effort in to produce higher quality code in the first place. And this then dramatically reduces the number of issues and bugs that will actually come up during the testing process. So that's a huge win from the developer's perspective that getting rid of the 90% of the CRUD helps them focus on producing higher quality deliverables in the first place. Another thing that's really cool about eliminating just volume of the, of the test cases that need to be written is that we've also therefore dramatically reduced the number of test plans, test scripts, test cases, test data, and everything else that the testing QA team has got to put together, uh, and then reduce the number of iterations that the, the test team is going to go through as they go through finding bugs and bringing issues to people's attention. So what this is really helping us to do is it's helping the QA team to really focus on the quality of both the business functionality and the overall usability of the solution. Now, let, let's let's draw this back then to what you traditionally would expect in software development. I mean, typically for a quality assurance kind of life cycle process, you've got your unit testing, and then you go into your system integration testing, possibly some functional testing. And then, and then finally, of course, you have the user acceptance testing. And you've touched on some of these elements already in, in what you've commented on. But how has this all really changed fundamentally with Trellis Spark? Well, as, as we said earlier, I mean, first of all, right, user acceptance testing, which normally comes at the end of the project, is actually happening live in real time with the business stakeholders right at the beginning, right? I mean, that is a huge conceptual change, yeah. okay? The other thing is that a lot of the testing that we normally have to do is related to the user experience, you know? So does this user you know, have the ability to even see this record. Given that they can see the record, can they see this field? Can they edit this field? Is there a button on this form that they can click? Do they have permission to click the button? Mm. Um, all of this functionality is now essentially for free. I mean, we're doing that inside the data model. We completely eliminated all of the code that would normally sit behind it, which means that we've eliminated all of that testing. So we have really change the way that, that the QA team are, are interacting. And we've integrated UAT testing into what the BA is doing when they're talking to the business stakeholders. We've significantly you reduced the integration testing because the framework itself handles the integration. 
you still have some unit testing left to do. So when you identify, I have a button on the form that processes the invoice, you still want to provide requirements to process the invoice and then you know, actually work through that. But we've significantly reduced uh, that unit testing requirement. So it's fundamentally changing the way the QA team needs to think about their role. Okay, but then, I mean, you've talked about eliminating and or reducing a lot of the testing, but realistically, then what is really left to test? Well, let's start with uh, the workflow components. Okay, so very simply, um, I might be building a system that's processing orders. Mm -hmm. uh, and on that order form, I'm going to put a button or a command that processes the order. OK, so as a BA, I'm going to need to pass some requirements down to my development team to say, well, here's how you process this particular type of order. Uh, those developers are, are then going to take that, uh, that those requirements and they're going to build a small piece of functionality that will process that order. And as a QA tester, you are going to need to prove that they did it right and everything is, is fine, right? So what you're going to want to do is build some very specific unit tests to say, well, when this order is processed or when this command is, is clicked, it needs to do these things with this order. And you will validate you know, all of the happy paths, all of the sad paths, and prove that that piece of functionality does what it needs to do. OK, but this is an independent piece of code now, right? This is something that's tested in complete isolation from everything else. You don't need to set up a test case to get to a point where you have some order data and you've got a whole script around that and you've then got to test whether or not the user can see the button. All of that is essentially done for you. That's all just part of the framework. So the only test that you are writing is the specific test of the functionality that's processing the order itself. Got it. And then the other side of this is because you're not testing the user experience, that's a given in, in the Trellis Spark framework. The code that you are writing is really easy to develop as an automated test script that you can stick inside the build logic for the CI CD pipelines. So it makes it really easy, you know, both to actually focus on testing the, the workflow that needs to be verified and then integrating that as an automated uh, test sequence inside your That's awesome. Um, so then realistically then, we're only testing workflow components? There must be other things that we have to test. Yeah, so another area where there may be uh, some QA and testing required is the fact that we allow the BAs and the developers to change the user experience. So as a business analyst, I might be developing a, an application that requires a new custom control. So, for example, if I'm building, say, an insurance policy management system, I might be doing something related to, say, vehicle policies. So I might want to go to my dev team and say, look, can you give me a, a vehicle component? You know, it's a whole new component. It's not in the in the Trellis Park framework. It needs to do some sort of mashup with a service on the internet to take a, a vehicle identification number, a VIN, as a parameter, and then download the make, the model, or the size of the engine, all of these this other vehicle data into the fields on, on this component, and then save that into the record associated with this vehicle on this policy. So we allow our developers and BAs to be able to custom to that extent. So if you're obviously going to do that sort of customization, then you're going to need to test it, right? So again, assuming that they're following the Trellis Spark guidelines and you've created a new version of a field component, then everything related to putting that component on a form and who can see it and who can edit it is just part of the framework. That's all for free again, right? So what we now need to do is test the specific user experience of that, that field in isolation. So if you put in a valid VIN, does it go to the internet, get the data and put it into the fields or not, right? So what we've done here again is we've isolated the testing that you're doing to purely what is it that the field itself needs to do? How is that field working in the back end? How is that adding data as elements of a record? All how you use and integrate that field into the framework is a given, it's there. That's very cool. So we've eliminated the integration testing and we've contained the unit testing 
What about regression testing? I mean, you, you touched a little bit around the CI/CD pipeline and how you can automate that stuff, but there must be an extensive amount of regression testing required. Uh, so not really. I mean, again, one of the key things about the Trellis Spark framework is that all of these components are very loosely coupled. So if you're making, say, changes to uh, a piece of the workflow, the only thing you really have to test is the workflow. Mm. If you're changing uh, the user experience, so let's say I've added an extra field to my uh, vehicle page or, or my order page, you know, in most cases that won't affect the uh, actual implementation of the workflow because the workflow is seeing a data agnostic record. And as long as you haven't actually removed any of the fields that are used in that particular workflow processing, you won't have broken that workflow. So, you know, you're still going to want to do some regression testing. So if I go in and change an order record, it would still make sense for me to run the unit test relating to all of the order workflow components. But if I can do that using the automated workflow and the CI CD pipeline, I have also saved myself a ton of time there as well. Yeah. So one of the really cool things about the Trellis Spark framework is just the isolation of the framework and the way that you're building things not only eliminates most of the integration testing in the first place and focuses down that unit testing, you've also eliminated a ton of the regression testing too. That's awesome. So in summary, we've dramatically reduced the overall effort of required testing. We've contained and simplified unit testing. We've almost eliminated integration testing, and we're doing UAT with the business stakeholders as we're developing the user experience and reducing the extent of regression testing as the UX evolves. To learn more about Great Ideas products and solutions, visit greatideas.com. That's greatideas with a Z.com. Thanks.